welcome back to the Diamond Mount channel. Today is a quick one. I'm going to give you a tip on how to keep gemstones cool when you're soldering on a piece of jewellery. Not many gemstones like being heated, and even ones where you think you can heat them, sometimes you can't. Like, they're already heat treated, and if you heat them up again, you can balls up the colour. Uh, so be careful and do a bit of research if you're unsure of what you're working on. Uh, I've just got these sweet little heart rings, little cluster. There's aquas in there, amethysts, and what was the other one? Uh, ones of tanzanite. So can't get any of those stones hot. Uh, the band is very fine, so I, I could solder it without the stones getting too hot. But just to be safe, I'm going to cover them up, and it's an opportunity to make a video as well to show you how I do it. Um, I've got two two techniques. This one is like stage one where I'm quite confident they're not going to get too hot. But there's also a stage two where you've got to be really, really, really confident uh, you're not going to get hardly any heat at all on a stone. And it's it's good technique for big stones as well. Use it on like big, big aquas and stuff like that. I personally hate the idea of these weird blue gels and stuff and all these weird kind of things you can buy for protecting protecting stones and stuff. I don't want all these like messy things on my on my bench. Right, let's get on with it. I'll show you what I do. Okay, so you need your ring that you're working on. Uh, you need a piece of kitchen tissue, kitchen towel, and I highly recommend you use this type of tissue because it's designed to not fall apart when it gets wet, unlike toilet roll. Um, and a paper clip, and that's it. Okay, so depending on the size of the stone and the ring and stuff, like if it's a big chunky stone, you might need a bit more tissue. But this is quite a um, small one, so I'm tearing off that much. A kind of long rectangle piece. Then that's going to be folded in half and wrapped around my gemstones with your paper clip. How do we do this? Get a pair of pliers. Uh, basically, I'm just going to open it up and see that make make that kind of thing with it. So there's a bit of a a bit of a gap down the middle. Got too much tissue here. I'm going to wrap it around a few times. I'm not used to doing this on. Such a small ring. Basically, you just want tissue to get wet and hold hold the moisture next to the stone. I think that's enough. So that's tightly wrapped around the gemstone-y bit. Use your paper clip to hold that in position. Squash that bit more flat. See, I'm spoiled. I'm used to working on really big stones. Okay, just make a little clip. And um, this is literally only the second one I've ever made. My first one I made is this one. You can see the size of the stuff I'm used to working on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, that's it. So I've just got that clip holding the tissue there. So there you go. You just dip in a bit of water. And that's, um, that's going to stay cool now. So yeah, I, may, I may as well show you the whole whole thing, so you've got no no questions. Got a little slot in my bench peg, push my tweezers down, so that's squeezing the shank together, which is important when you're soldering. My solder joints are holding together when the solder flows. Um, have not necessarily like uh, need a brush as big as that, but make sure you've got maybe a spare like borax brush, something a bit bigger than usual, and then. If you're doing, like, say it's platinum, you've got to get it really hot, you can solder on that, and then if you're a bit worried about the tissue drying out, you can have your water nearby, and you can just dip that in and just get the tissue wet. Just put loads on the tissue, and then continue soldering. Um, but this technique doesn't take too much heat away, especially on a, on a thin band like that. I'll have no trouble at all getting solder to flow there. Um, sometimes, on a, if that was platinum, even a thin band using 1700C solder, um, 
with a proper oxypropane torch, you can get the solder to flow so quickly that barely even starts to hiss. Like it doesn't even evaporate the water and you've just melted solder at 1700C just there. Um, but it just takes a very sharp, high pressure flame and a bit of skill and confidence because <laughs> obviously you don't want to know it. Thanks very much for watching guys. I hope that was useful for you. I highly recommend this technique. I've been using it for 20 years or so and I've never damaged a stone from getting it too hot. But like I say, have a, have a quite a bigger than usual brush. Keep your water nearby, even like right next to it if you want. So if it is, if you are having trouble getting the solder to flow um, or you'll, it flowed the wrong way and you've got to put a bit more solder on, that happens. Uh, yeah, make sure you get the tissue nice and wet again. Keep an eye on it. But it will, it will hiss as you get, uh, get heat on the ring. It will start to hiss and the water will evaporate. So it's not something you can keep soldering, keep soldering and uh, not have to do anything about it. You want to keep the tissue wet. And uh, maybe after it's soldered, just let it sit a little bit. Don't just grab it and pull the tissue off because if there is a bit of heat in the stone, you don't want to be suddenly pulling the tissue off and there's a cold draft or something. I don't know, like just don't risk it. Just let it sit there and cool down. Um, and that's it. It's a, it's a good technique. Been using it for 20 years, like I say, and never had a problem. Like it's always worked for me. Just keep, keep the tissue wet and, and then that's it. You'll be good to go. So thanks very much for watching and hit like and subscribe if you want and see you next time. Bye.